Hi everyone and welcome to this breakout session. I'm so excited you could join me here today. My name's Eden Spodek. I'm founder of Spodek & Co, a digital marketing agency that helps businesses build awareness through storytelling, generate leads, and drive sales. Although I'm located in Toronto, Canada, we serve clients across North America and our team has been operating virtually since 2010. Over the next 20 minutes or so, I'll be sharing how to amplify your marketing campaigns through audio and video, followed by a live Q&A. And you're also invited afterwards to continue the conversation either at the Spodek & Co table in the main auditorium or drop by and visit our booth. To kick things off, let's start with a question that you can answer in the chat. I would love to know how much time you think Americans spend watching digital video each day. Remember, please post your answers in the chat. Well, the answer may surprise you. According to eMarketer, adults in the United States will watch an average of 140 minutes of digital video per day this year. And that's up from last year when many of us were home with not much else to do. Are you a business leader looking to reach a wider audience and increase sales through the use of audio and video? Then stay tuned. We are visual creatures and 65% of us are visual learners. We learn best when content is summarized into smaller chunks that are easier to process and supported by imagery that's relatable. Visuals and audio also help with comprehension and retention. On top of that, 30% of us are oral or auditory learners and learn best when we hear sounds, rhythm, and music. In total, that's 95% of the population. Are you convinced yet? Are you using audio and video to boost brand storytelling? Do you know how testimonials and reviews generate leads and influence purchasing decisions? If not, you're probably missing growth opportunities for your business. How do you decide when to engage a producer instead of using a DIY approach? In this session, you'll learn why video is an essential part of your marketing mix, discover where it should live online, and how to share it with your audience to maximize results. And keep an eye out because during the session, there'll be some polls and there'll be more questions that I'm asking you to answer in the chat. Have you ever thought of a podcast as being an intimate form of communication? Well, let me tell you a story. I'm not one for connecting on LinkedIn with people I don't know. I've been a regular podcast subscriber for almost 20 years. Yes, you heard that right. When you're listening to a podcast, you're hearing a person's voice and they're talking to you directly, right in your ear, in your head, especially when you're wearing earphones or AirPods or something similar. It almost feels like you actually know them, whether or not that's the case in real life. Years ago, one of the podcast hosts I was listening to and where I regularly submitted audio comments invited me to connect with him on LinkedIn. I accepted somewhat reluctantly. Guess what? We not only became friends, he recommended me to co-develop and teach a certificate program at the postgraduate level of a continuing education program at a highly respected university. And we've since done lots of work together. It all started with a podcast. Let's fast forward to 2021. With platforms like Clubhouse, we can have real-time audio conversations with an audience, a targeted audience at any time. We can also gain intelligence about our target customers and clients by listening to some sessions on Clubhouse where they may be spending their time. By now, you may be wondering, Clubhouse? What the heck is that? What is this TikTok thing I've been hearing so much about? So let's take a quick look at many of the social platforms where content appealing to our auditory and visual senses can be found. Here's a high level overview of the platforms you should know about and some screenshots showing you how the content and some features are displayed. Stop by our booth and you can download a cheat sheet that I've made especially for you. There are two key things you must consider when choosing the right medium for your message. First of all, consider your overall strategy. What's your business strategy? What are your business goals and objectives? How do your marketing goals and objectives fit into that? 
And where does video and or audio fit into that? How can they help move the needle for your business? And your content must be both compelling and human. For example, what problems are you solving? Is it entertaining? Is it relatable? If you don't have great content, you're not ready to press the record button. Next, know your audience. Fish where the fish are, as they say. Create content in the medium where your audience spends their time. If they're always on the road or working out, spending a ton of time listening to things, then you may want to choose a format that's audio only. For others who are spending a lot of their time in front of a screen and really respond to visual cues, consider video. There are a couple of other tricks I'll get into later with video for people who have the sound off, as I'm sure you've experienced on your own as well. Let's discuss some of the new nuances of audio. With the emergence of real-time social audio platforms, it's more important than ever that people who represent your brand in these channels are knowledgeable and well-spoken. The copy and paste response into a comment box won't work here anymore. This is something to consider if you're contemplating using an audio channel for customer service as well. And what are some of the applications that we can use video and audio for to help communicate our message? What types of messages do we want to use them for? Let's start with storytelling. Telling our business story is a great way. Video in particular lends itself to storytelling incredibly well. Here's some other ways that you can consider using audio and video in your marketing. As you can see, there's so many of them. Let's talk about testimonials. Don't discount the impact of video testimonials. They give social proof third-party recommendations for your product or service offerings, and they bring a lot of credibility to what it is that your company is providing. Are you using explainer videos, how-tos, and demos behind the scenes that give people insight into what goes on in the making of your business and the product or services that you're offering? News and new product announcements about your business as well. So think about it like an about page on your website, only but bringing it into the realm of audio and video. What about interviews? They provide a great opportunity to interview team members, subject matter experts, third party analysts, happy customers, and case studies. They let us meet the executives and make them more approachable. They let us break down the barriers between your brand and your customers or clients. Let's even try to do that before they get past the homepage of your website so they have a sense of comfort before you speak with them and vice versa. You can use teasers to promote other content on one channel to promote longer versions on the other. For instance, using small teasers on Instagram in video format, even in Instagram stories or reels, to drive your audience to your website where they can watch the longer versions and then potentially subscribe for your newsletter or book a call with you. You can have discussions, particularly if you're doing a webinar or real-time audio conversations and education or courses, just to name a handful. The applications and opportunities are endless. Let's take a moment now and see what you think. Does your business use video for marketing? Let us know in the chat. Let's talk about production values. First impressions are important. If you're looking to make a first impression, you want your brand to be at its best. In the B2B context, Often the first impression a potential customer has with your company is on your website and video or audio clips on your website require skill and high production values, even if it looks simple because it's not. Sometimes hiring a professional can be even more cost effective than having an employee who is somewhat skilled, but would require more time for production and whose time is better spent focusing on other work. Likewise, if you're using animation or producing explainer videos, you'll want to use an experienced production company. The DIY or do-it-yourself approach still has a place in the business context. It's great for many applications of social media quality video or audio, quick behind the scenes clips and more. Other things to consider are your budget, brand, and the value it places on authenticity and or being organic in nature and the speed you need to get information to market. And good news, there's a growing trend of easy to use in-app tools being offered by platforms such as Canva and Facebook Creator, video filters, royalty-free music, and more, all at your fingertips. 
Often brands mix both professional and DIY quality and or have professionally produced audio or video content that even appears like it's DIY. And here's a tip. Use text overlays in your videos, especially the ones shared in social media, because many people consume video while they're scrolling and have the volume turned off. That way they'll get your message regardless. I've got another question for you. Does your business use audio for marketing? Let us know in the chat. So now you have your content and what are you gonna do when your files are completed? It's important to create a hub or central repository that's accessible to your audience and where everything lives. And it isn't necessarily the only place or the most visited place that the content is stored, but it is one central location. Typically, especially with video, although you can definitely do it with audio files as well, and there's a huge benefit to doing that, consider storing all of your professional quality video and audio files on YouTube. You'll get all the search benefits of YouTube as well, and you can always direct people to your YouTube channel. It's also important to have video and audio content on your website for search engine optimization, and it helps to generate leads, especially when placed strategically on your homepage and landing pages. Video testimonials are great on the homepage of your website, and if you don't have them, consider adding them right away. The same with an explainer video, using a video to explain your service offerings goes a long way in telling people why they need you. Do you use video testimonials on your website homepage? Let us know in the chat. And always remember what I call the three R's, repurpose, reuse, and recycle. One great example is when you're using something like Facebook Live, where essentially you're creating an interactive experience with your audience streaming in real time. You're also creating a video simultaneously through Facebook. People can share comments and ask questions that can come through the event as well. You can respond to them either directly through the Facebook live stream or in the comment section. And when it's over, Facebook automatically, or automatically as I like to say, creates an archive of your video. The video archive will continue to be shown on your Facebook business page, assuming you have one, and you probably should. Then you can download that Facebook live video and share it in other places. Add it to your YouTube channel, a blog post, or your company's next email newsletter, etc. Separate the audio file and use it in a podcast. There's many different places where that Facebook Live archive can live. There are many examples and opportunities to take live or real-time content, archive it, host it, and share it as part of your content marketing strategy. And building on that, how and where do you share your audio and video files with your customers and prospects? Well, we talked about hosting them in places like YouTube and your website. You can also share them through social media. You can take little snippets and edits and use them as teasers, like I mentioned earlier. You want to be able to share them both organically and extend their reach with paid campaigns to get them a wider audience. We'd love to hear from you. Are you actively using content in other locations? Let us know in the chat. Here's a tip for you. When sharing on a social media platform, upload the original video file, not a link to it on your YouTube channel. You'll get more eyeballs and or listeners interacting with your content in places like Facebook and Instagram and LinkedIn. Why? Because channels like Facebook want to be the ones housing your content, and they don't want your visitors to leave to view that video or listen to an audio clip elsewhere. Here's another tip. Use your audio and video as a lead magnet if it includes high value content such as a webinar or a Facebook Live. Have you ever embedded links to your audio or video into your email marketing messages to send them to clients or customers as a way to keep them informed? And what about your prospects? It's a great way to re-engage and remind them about you and your business. And don't forget, you can also advertise on another brand's video or podcast or engage other influencers to advertise your products or services in their videos or podcasts. What are your thoughts? Have you tried real-time audio such as Clubhouse? What's your experience been like? Let us know in the chat. So let's see how this is applied in real life. We're gonna to turn to a couple of case studies now. First, we'll talk about social video. Due to the season suspension last year, the NBA became an early adopter of TikTok and focused more time on the platform than they otherwise perhaps would have. Their content ranges from sporting challenges to behind the scenes pranks, and they typically post five or six times a day. As a result, their current follower count has grown to 12.5 million, 
and it's growing daily. So they are able to capture their audience by providing another form of entertainment, especially since many of their audience members are subject to shorter seasons and can no longer attend games. Chipotle also uses TikTok to build brand awareness and visibility. They had a guac dance campaign with a branded guac dance hashtag in conjunction with National Avocado Day. It drove nearly 250,000 video submissions. That's user generated content and almost 430,000 video starts. That means people clicking on their videos during a six day campaign. According to Chipotle, they also produce tangible results. More than 800,000 sides of free guacamole were served through their business on National Avocado Day. The video now has billions of views and counting. They successfully used TikTok to achieve brand awareness and visibility to drive sales. And on the audio side, last year, a study revealed that consumers favor companies with authentic, trustworthy messaging over big name companies with decades of brand loyalty and social audio can help businesses build that trust with the community which can be especially important during challenging times. Companies are taking notice of social audio and getting into the trend, including brands like Restaurant Brands International with Burger King and Popeyes and Tim Hortons, Mod Cloth and Cinnabon. Social audio can also be an effective tool to conduct market research, as mentioned earlier. You can connect with your target audience or just listen to what matters most to them in real time. Clubhouse is an ideal place to do that. Remember, whomever represents your brand on social audio platforms must be well-spoken and have extensive knowledge about the company. Got another question for you. What's your favorite podcast? We'd love to know. Let us know in the chat. Measurement ties back to your business and marketing objectives. So many businesses are focused on the wrong metrics, the so-called vanity metrics. It's not the size of your audience, but the quality and how likely people are to respond to your calls to action and behave in the manner that you intend. Some important metrics to focus on include leads, purchase intent, inquiries, and of course, sales. These are typically the most important. Video views, shares, engagements, and follows are important as are audio listens, downloads, shares, and follows. Event attendees, in places like webinars, clubhouse events, and other real-time broadcasts, and ranking on podcatchers such as iTunes and Spotify. Going back to the Chipotle case study, we can see how an awareness campaign housed on TikTok had an effective call to action and impacted purchasing decisions to increase sales. What more could a brand ask for? And there you have it. That's our presentation for today. And now it's time to turn to you. Please ask your questions. You can write them in the chat and I will do my best to answer them. Thank you. Thank you very much for joining me. I hope you found the session valuable. I just wanted to let you know or remind you that I'll be available at the Spodek & Co table in the main auditorium to answer any further questions that you may have. And you can visit our booth for a social audio and video cheat sheet. Please stay in touch now that you have my contact information. I'd love to hear from you following today's conference and please enjoy the rest of the afternoon. Thanks very much. Take care and stay safe.